Hey there, picking up right where we left off. Okay. So, we said that elasticity is kind of like a percent, right? Uh, elasticity is kind of like uh, the percent of deformation or deform. How, uh, what percentage of it it gets deformed because of the stress. Um, and then this, the sigma, is the axial stress, which is how much, um, basically, how much force is going through any, say, square inch um, of the cross section. Uh, or what's, yeah, basically how much force is going through the cross section kind of thing. Um, so what does that really mean, kind of? What this tells us is that if we want to compress it 10%, regardless of the length, it has nothing to do with the length, right? Because this this is the change in length divided by length. So if we just want to compress it 10% or maybe 1%, which is 0 0.01, uh, then if we know the elasticity modulus of the material, well then we know how much stress we have to put it under. So let me work through a quick problem that I'm going to completely make up on the spot. Okay, because uh, you know things always turn out well when I do that. So. I'm switching to red just because things never turn out well, like I said. Uh, so we've got this, uh, we've got this rod. It's a fat rod, not a hot rod. It's a fat rod. Um, it's a fat rod, and I'm going to say that it's being. Now remember, pushing and pulling on it is the same for all intents and purposes, right? It, uh, it in the calculations, it comes out the same. So I just remember that part. So I'm going to say that it's being pushed, uh, like compressed, so right, so the arrow is going to be facing inwards towards itself, it's being pressed into itself, um, it's being compressed, I'm going to say that it's area, area, I'm not going to give you the radius, if they give you the radius, then you have to use uh, pi r squared to get the area, uh, and that's the area of the cross section. So the area is equal to, we'll say, um, five uh, square inches, so square, s square inches, squin, yay, square inches, okay, so five square inches is the area, and then um, let's say that it's made out of steel, right, steel. So that means that the elasticity modulus, and this is something that you'd want to look up in one of those charts, right? The charts that he gives you. This is where that's where I'm getting this elasticity modulus from. The elasticity modulus of steel is 29. So what do, what, what do we do with that? Well, say say we want to compress this and make it 1% shorter. So we want to make it 1% um, shorter. Or, what's 1% as a decimal? That's 0.01, right? Uh, equals 0.01. So, what is this percent shorter? Well, that is just our, eight, um, our epsilon value, right? That's our percent deformation. And we have our elasticity modulus. So, um, let's plug in. E is 29, so 29 equals whatever sigma is over uh, that um, that silly epsilon character, which is 0.01. So we get 0.01. Now let's multiply both the top and the bottom by 0.01. So we get point times 0.01, and this times 0.01. Forgive me for my vertical multiplication. Handy dandy calculator, 29 times 0.01. You could have done that. So we get 0.29 is equal to sigma, right? Sigma equals 0.29. That's a crappy sigma, but you get the picture. That's a sigma. Sigma equals 0.29. And remember, sigma is the force divided by the area. And we know the area is 5 square inches. So 0.29 is equal to sigma, which is equal to force over... We said the area is 5 inches, right? Area 5 square inches. We get 5. Then if we multiply both sides by 5, uh, so then this times 5, we get the fourth, right? Because these cancel out. So you get 5 times 0.29 times 5. Uh, we get 1.45.
and that's your answer. You have to push with 1.45 newtons to compress, to um, take a, a, uh, a cylinder with a cross-sectional area of 5 square inches, 1% uh, shorter. I don't know what that is in pounds. Um, I don't know what the radius of this is. I mean, the radius of this really is not very big. Because um, if you think about it, if you divide 5 by pi, well, you know, let me figure out the radius. Uh, if you divide 5 by pi, because remember it's pi r squared, so 5 over uh, 3.14 equals the square root of that. So it's got a radius of 1.2 meters, or uh, rather 1.2 inches. Um, oh, by the way, this is, um, this is going to be in pounds, because we used inches here. We used inches. Um, and, the, and the elasticity modulus is in pounds per square inch. Pounds per square inch PSI. Um, so, basically, if you have a, a, a steel cylinder with, um, what did we say the radius was? It was like, w with a 1.2 inch radius, um, that's like two and a half inches across, uh, all you need to do is push with 1.45 pounds of force, and you should be able to make that cylinder 1% shorter. Uh, assuming I didn't screw up stupidly somewhere and mess up the math, which is incredibly possible, right? Because I screw things up a lot. Because guess what? I'm not perfect. Get over it. Um, but hopefully, and you can check my math there, if I, uh, if I did this wrong, I'll probably end up just remaking the video, or just deleting it and not bothering to remake the video, depending on whether or not we got past this yet, but, um, I think this is alright. It looks good to me. Yeah, okay, so, um, hopefully that helped a bit. Um... Just, uh, what I want you to really get out of these past two videos is, um, shear and axial stress are both just how hard you're pushing divided by, uh, the thickness of whatever it is you're pushing on. The change in length, or how deformed something is, the deformation, is a stupid delta thing, and that's just the change in length. The strain is the percent change in length. So, if it changes one, um, meter, and the original length is 100 meters, well, then that's a 1% change. 1 over 100, that's one. That's 0.01 or 1%. So that's all strain is. Strain is the percent change. So um, the elasticity modulus is basically um, how much stress you have to apply to get some percent change. Uh, that's what that corresponds to. The elasticity modulus is something that um, you can find in all kinds of tables and stuff. Um, I feel like I should cover one more thing. I'm debating whether or not I have time. Hmm. Anything? Um, what should I show? Oh, okay. Uh, let's just go through and kind of see what units each of these are in. Um, now for, uh, for, whatchamacallit? Um,. I'm going to give you both the PO and the physics units. Actually, no. I'm only going to give you the PO units, although I will mention what the physics units are, just because you don't have to use the physics units, because uh, he uses the American measurement system, because uh, we're stubborn. Okay, so shear stress and axial stress, these are both going to be the same, right? Because it's both stress. So force is in pounds, and area is in square inches, right? Guess what? That's the unit. It's pounds per square inch. Boring, right? Okay, well, in uh, in the metric system, or SI units, uh, this is newtons, right? And this is square meters, so newtons per square meter, and uh, that's actually called a pascal, one pascal. And that's a newton per square meter. Uh, and it's the same thing here, too. Change in length or deformation. Guess what? This is like inches. Inches, or it would be, or it could be meters, right? Depending on which system you're using. So that's a really, really easy one. Uh, if you pull on rubber, 
how much did the length of it change? It changed x inches. Inches, that's an easy unit to remember. Strain. This might confuse the people at first, but when you look at it, it'll make sense. Okay, we said that the delta, or the change in length, is in inches, right? Or uh, possibly meters, but we'll just, for now we'll just look at that. We'll, for now we'll just say it's inches. And the original length wa is also in inches, right? Because if it starts out at 100 inches, and you stretch it to 101 inches, well that's the change is one inch, but it's inches over inches. This cancels out. So it turns out that this is a, uh, um, it has no units. And that should actually make sense when you think of it as a percentage, because you don't say that something is 6% meters. It just doesn't make sense. So hopefully that makes it very, very clear why this is unitless. It's a percent. Percents don't have units. Um, okay, now let's tackle the, uh, the monster equation. Oh, so here I'm going to write no units. Let's tackle what seems to be the monster equation, right? Because this is really big and this is what you have to use all the time. It's not that ugly, okay? Because, think about it. This is pounds per square inch. Pounds per inch squared. Or pounds per square inch. Or pascals divided by this is unitless. So this has no units. So divided by 1. The elasticity modulus is going to be in pounds per square inch, or in pascals. Uh, and you can check that with the tables or whatever. But, and I mean, I mean they might tell you, um, like, mega pounds per square inch, or kilopounds per square inch. And that's just, you, I mean, you know how to figure out whether it's a thousand or what a million or whatever that crap is. But um, that's the key thing to get out of this, okay? Uh, pounds per square inch, or pascals, divided by a percent, gives you that elasticity modulus, which is also in the pounds per square inch. It's also in pascals. Um, I think in... Uh, like two videos. I just kind of explained that pretty well. I like to think so. I'd love to hear your input on this, whether or not it helped or didn't, whether or not it, uh, uh, it actually explained things, or whether or not I just sounded like Dr. Fisto repeating the notes, because I, uh, I just want to help you guys. So, um, I'm doing this for you, so do one little thing for me and just tell me if it's working. Tell me if, uh, Tell me if I'm confusing you, tell me if there's one thing that I could do to improve, tell me if you can't hear me, tell me if you can't read my writing, um, just give me input, I need it, thank you. Um, my next video I'm going to do a couple practice problems, like the problem from the, uh, from the packet. So, um, I'll see you then.